Hey everyone, uh, thanks so much for joining us here virtually with the University of Denver. Um, I know some people are still joining us, but we're gonna go ahead and get started with some introductions just for the sake of time. Um, but again, thanks so much for joining us. We're really excited that you all decided to take some time out of your evening today and uh, join us so you can learn a little bit more about writing your college application essay. Um, myself and my colleague, Stephanie, who you're gonna meet here in just a second. Uh, we both feel really strongly that this essay is a great opportunity for you to be creative, but also tell your personal story. So we're gonna take you all through the entire process of writing your college application essay, give you some do's and don'ts, uh, some tips and things like that. Uh, but before we do get started, my name is Stephanie Francis. Um, I'm one of our assistant directors of admission here at DU. So I do have counseling duties where I work with students throughout the application process. Um, I travel to the different states and meet with students, uh, review applications and help our office make decisions. I think that's probably important context for you to know about us. Uh, just given the nature of this presentation, but uh, I'll pass things off to my colleague whose name is also Stephanie. Yes, I like to call Stephanie Francis the other better Stephanie, for sure. <laughs> um, but I am an Associate Director of Admission. Uh, I've worked at DU for 14 years now. I work with all of our students from Southern California and the state of Ohio. Um, I also read applications and make decisions as well, so also important context to have. Um, I'm going to let Stephanie kind of start us out um, and then I will join about midway through and then we'll be answering some questions at the end as well. Um, so I will come back on in just a bit. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, so like Stephanie said, just a couple of things we want to go through with you all. Um, here's a look at what our agenda for this next hour is going to look like. So we are going to spend the first 45 minutes or so going through this presentation, which you all actually will get a copy of in a follow up email. So there will be all of our notes and whatnot in that presentation. Uh, feel free to look that over later if you all want to come back to it and things like that. And then we're going to wrap up this hour, the last 15 minutes or so uh, with a question and answer. So uh, one, a couple of things we do want to point out wherever your toolbar is for Zoom on your screen, you're gonna see a couple of different icons to pay attention to. There's a chat icon, so if you're familiar with Zoom like all of us have gotten very used to over the past few months, uh, you may notice that this Zoom format looks a little bit differently, and that's because we're using a Zoom webinar format. So typically, if you were using Zoom for class or meetings or anything like that, the chat section would be where you would interact, you would ask your questions and whatnot, but for tonight's purposes, that's really just where you're gonna find uh, Stephanie and I posting some different links if we think that there's anything useful for you all to know externally. And then if you all do have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to put them in that Q&A section that you should be able to see. Um, like Stephanie mentioned, her and I are gonna be going back and forth presenting here. Uh, the other person will be in the background answering your questions. If your question's not answered right away, I promise we are not forgetting about you. We're not ignoring you. Um, it's just, as I mentioned, we are going to wrap up this hour with a live Q&A. So we may be uh, saving some of your questions just so we can answer them in front of the larger group. But that's pretty much how the webinar is going to work out. This here on your screen is going to give you an idea of what our agenda looks like for this presentation. So talking all things college application essays. The first thing we're going to talk about is how important this essay is. Why are we requiring you all to write these? Um, are they required at all? We'll go through all of those types of things. We'll also talk about the different types of essays that you should write. So um, I personally think that there's a lot of different topics colleges can ask you to write about, but you can really boil them down to two different types of uh, topics. We'll talk more about those here in a bit. Uh, we'll go through some do's and don'ts, and then uh, we'll wrap up the presentation portion uh, with a couple of examples just so you all can kind of get a good tangible idea of what we would consider a good essay and maybe an essay that needs some work. So let's dive right into it. Um, these are some different things that I think students should be thinking about before you write. So a lot of you sitting at home today, this is probably the stage you're in right now. Some of you may be overachievers and you've already started working on your college application essays if you're a senior in high school. Um, some of you may not be seniors. Some of you may just not have started yet. That's totally fine. Um, but for those of you who are getting ready to think about writing that essay, I think these are some great questions to ask yourself. So that first question is, does the school you're applying to even require an essay? Um, some schools it's going to be optional. Some students do require them. Some schools are going to require you to submit supplemental essays like the SAT writing sample or things like that. Um, some schools are going to tell you, please don't send me an essay. I promise I don't have time to read it. So the best rule of thumb, if you remember nothing else throughout this presentation, 
stay in touch with your admission counselor. Um, there's people like Stephanie and I at every college or university that you'll be applying to. It is our whole job to help you through the admission process and the application process. So again, best rule of thumb, if you're unsure what the requirements for your essay are, just be sure to be in contact with that school's admission counselor and I guarantee they'll be happy to help you with that. You also wanna ask yourself what your topic is. So again, there's gonna be a couple of different types of topics that we'll go more into detail with, uh, but the big key here is that you wanna choose something to write about that you're really confident in, you know some information about, it's not a research paper or anything else like that. We want you to write about something that you feel strongly about, um, and then definitely still challenge yourself a little bit though. So challenge yourself with your views, your opinions that you're putting in there, different things like that. The last question I think is important to ask yourself is how long does this need to be? So before you get going, you wanna have an expectation of how much you're actually going to be writing. Again, a good rule of thumb, you wanna make sure your essay is long enough so that you cover all of the details, but short enough so that you're staying engaged with the reader, it's exciting to read. Um, you don't wanna write you know, four, five, six pages down the road. Uh, people like myself and Stephanie, we read hundreds if not thousands of essays every single year. And so a big thing that's gonna be important is keeping that reader's attention. Um, and we'll talk again a little bit about that here in just a moment. But how important is this essay? Again, why the heck are we even requiring you to write this? What's the whole methodology behind writing these college application essays? Um, a really big thing to think about and something that um, Stephanie and I really wanted to emphasize here is that I know there's probably a lot of hype around your college essay right now, whether it's from your counselors, your teachers, maybe your parents, anything like that. I know a lot of high school students applying to colleges get very nervous about writing their essay. And we are here to reassure you that I promise it is very rarely a make or break thing for a student. The essay is extremely important. Um, it's a great way for you to tell your personal story, for us to get to know you as a whole person. And it can really make a difference for a lot of students. But all in all, take a deep breath. I promise it is very rarely something that is going to make or break your application. We just wanna make sure that you all can showcase yourself in the best light. And so we'll go through um, all the ins and outs and how you can do that throughout this presentation. But one of the biggest reasons it's so important is because a lot of schools are utilizing what we call a holistic review process. Some people have heard that before. I've said that to people and they've kind of rolled their eyes. They think it's just a, a way for us to deny students based on any reason we want to. That's really not true. Um, I always tell students that really all that that means is someone like myself or Stephanie is gonna sit at a computer and we're actually gonna read everything that we're asking you to submit to us in your application. So your essay is super important because it actually helps us put context to all of the different numbers and statistics that we're looking at. I hear from a lot of high school students, you don't wanna just be known as another number, as another grade or test score. And that's super valid. We don't wanna treat you like another number either. So give us a little context as to who you are as a person, what your situation is, what you're passionate about, your goals, things like that, that really helps us. Especially if you're applying to a school like DU where we are a test optional university. So that means you will have the option whether or not you want to include your SAT or ACT scores. It's a great option for a lot of students. Some students don't really have access to test prep. Some students just don't test well for a variety of different reasons, especially during this year's circumstances. A lot of these tests are getting canceled. And so if you are applying to a test optional university, again, that can be a great option, but that is one less quantitative measure that we have to review your academic performance. And so it's especially important to focus on those non-quantitative measures like your essay, your letters of recommendation and things like that. As I mentioned, it helps us get to know not just you as a person, but it also helps us to assess your writing ability as well. First and foremost, we wanna make sure that you're gonna be academically successful at our university. And so you'll hear us talking about this quite a bit here later on in the presentation, but make sure that your essay is proofread. Make sure that it's checked for grammar, spelling, sentence structure, all of those things, because as much as we wanna to get to know you as a whole person, we also are trying to see if you're gonna be academically successful at our university in terms of writing. And then again, a lot of schools are going to ask you to write about a specific topic, but it's really your opportunity to just put yourself on that page. Tell us who you are, give us some context to these numbers that we're taking a look at. And so I'm gonna jump right in into some different topics that you might hear about. And so these here, these are good examples of what I would call assigned topics. And so an assigned topic, it's exactly like what it says. This is a very pointed question that a university is asking you to answer. They're doing it in a very strategic way. They wanna see that you can stay on task. 
but they also want to see you give your personal opinions and your personal views. So these are some different examples of prompts that you may see that would fall under that assigned topic. Um, you know, talk about something that you're really passionate about. Uh, where, do, where did you learn that information from? Who's the most important person in your life? Choose an issue common to colleges, suggest a solution, give your thoughts on a societal issue. Again, these are all very pointed questions where you should have an answer to them, but there's a lot of great opportunities for you to tie in your personal experiences, your views and your opinions in there as well. So what are you gonna to wanna to do if you're answering one of these assigned topics? These are a few different things here. So first and foremost, you wanna make sure that you're answering that question. Again, these colleges are asking these questions and setting these prompts very strategically. Um, they wanna see that you can stay on task and stay true to the question, but also tie in a little bit about yourself. So for example, um, if you decide to answer that last prompt that I mentioned about talking about a controversial issue or a societal issue, something like that, um, maybe you wanna talk about global warming. Maybe that's a topic you're really passionate about, you know a lot of information about, Again, choose something you're really confident about that you can write a bunch of information, but also be sure to tie it back to yourself. You can tie in your own personal views and opinions on that as well. You also wanna be sure to just be yourself. That's a great rule of thumb no matter what you're writing about. Um, as I mentioned, we're reading hundreds if not thousands of these essays a year. And so it's very obvious when a student is not being authentic, when they're not being themselves, um, college is an amazing opportunity for you to explore who you are and determine who you want to be, but this is not your opportunity to reinvent yourself, um, to, you know, tell us what you think a college admission counselor wants to hear. That's a very uh, common sentiment that I hear amongst a lot of students. They'll say, oh, well, I had to write about this because so-and-so told me that admission counselors like to read about this or they like to know this about you. That's really not true. We just want you to write about something that you're passionate about. We want to get to know you as a person. And so if you don't have what I call the big American Idol moment that has happened in your life, um, the reality is most of you will be writing these essays when you're 17, 18 years old, and you just might not have experienced something big like that. And that's totally fine. You don't have to write about that just because that's something you think we want to hear. Um, I always tell students one of the best essays I ever read in my entire life was about a student who was afraid of grass. And so it was very funny, it was very humorous, but I got to know a little bit about this student and something about them. So be true to yourself, be honest. Again, don't just write about what you think we may wanna hear. And with that, have a, con a confident conclusion. So when you're talking about yourself or if you're talking about a, a prompt that you're really passionate about, sometimes it can be really easy to ramble on, but you wanna make sure you wrap it up. You wanna make sure that you're utilizing that word count effectively. Um, one thing I did forget to mention when we were talking about kind of, um, you know, all of those word counts and whatnot. Uh, so Common App, if some of you are using the Common Application, they do have a 250 to 650 word requirement. And so I think that's a great rule of thumb, even if you're not using the Common Application to follow that. It'll be about a page, a page and a half long, um, maybe two if you're double spacing or anything like that. So be sure that you're using that 250 to 650 words wisely. And then once you're finished writing it, let it sit, rewrite it later. Um, I'm a procrastinator myself, but I promise this is not the essay that you wanna wait until the last minute to do. You really wanna give yourself enough time so that you can write something out, have it proofread by your English teacher. I think that's a great thing that students can do. They'll be sure to check it for sentence structure, grammar, spelling, all of those sorts of things. Have it read by a family member or by a friend. I know that might be awkward sometimes to do, but they're the best people who can really tell if you're writing in your authentic voice, um, if it really truly sounds like who you are as a person. So those are a few tips on the do's for assigned topics. I'm going to turn things over to Stephanie Tangelson. She's going to walk you all through some other different types of topics you may see. Yes, and I am going to echo a lot of what Stephanie said um, in kind of the personal topics realm, um, for sure. So, you know, there's assigned topics, there's personal topics, sometimes personal topics are assigned topics, um, but you can really, you know, I feel like we really get to know a student um, more when they choose a personal topic, not that an assigned topic is not the way to go, that's completely fine. Um, but I personally, selfishly, really like when a student chooses a personal topic. Um, so just some examples of personal topics are on the screen here. So describe a special skill or accomplishment that sets you apart. Describe your most meaningful achievement, how it relates to your future goals, um, how you have uh, demonstrated leadership in and out of school, 
write a personal statement detailing what makes you a great asset to the school. I always like to kind of point out that what makes you a great asset to the school as opposed to you know, kind of why you want to attend the school. Um, I read a lot of applications or a lot of essays um, from students that will write about, you know, the programs DU has and, you know, the DU has this major and that's why I think it's so great. We already know what programs we have and what majors we have and we are completely biased and we already think they're great. Um, so we want to know why you would be a good asset to the school. Um, so, Stephanie, if you could go to the next slide, that would be awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so just some of the, sorry, just hold on one second here. Um, so again, to kind of echo what um, Stephanie had said before, so you know, make sure that you are answering the questions. Um, I know that sounds obvious, but um, you'd be surprised. So choose a question that really resonates you with you and make sure that you answer it fully. Um, don't necessarily include details that don't need to be there, but make sure that you are answering it fully. You know, make sure you have a concise reason for why you were writing on that topic. Um, you know, keep in mind that you're writing for college admissions, that you're, you know, you're not writing to a friend or someone who knows this already. This is um, you know, our first glance into not only who you are, but kind of how you convey ideas. Um, so write about yourself, be sure to bring it full circle. You know, make sure you keep your audience in mind um, and make sure you are you know, only including the important details for sure. Um, be yourself. I know that Stephanie already said this. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to be authentically you in this essay. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to you know, write your essay the way that you would write a text to your best friend. That's obviously your authentic self. That's not exactly what we're looking for in this essay. You know, your authentic self can also be found in a classroom setting. It can also be found in a job interview. There's kind of different versions of that authentic self. You want to bring the, the slightly more professional, slightly more polished authentic version of you for sure. Um, you know, me drinking wine with my best friend on a Friday night is one thing. Um, you know, me writing a cover letter for, you know, a job that I really want is another. Um, so I would think of it more as the latter. Um, wrap it up. Certainly, um, you know, have a, have a solid conclusion. Make sure that you are closing in everything that you've spoken to. I also read a lot of essays from students that will kind of bring up something that they haven't brought up throughout the rest of the essay um, in the very, very last paragraph. And it's just kind of a throwaway final sentence. Um, I wanna know more about that. So I wish that you had brought it up earlier. So make sure that you're kind of wrapping it up in a, in a solid fashion. Um, and then yes, again, let it sit. Please, please, please let it sit. Let it sit for a few days, like you would with any kind of important writing. Um, you know, maybe you are in a heated conversation with someone. Um, you know, you need to write a final paper for a class where it's 50% of your grade. Um, any kind of important writing should sit for a few days. And just like Stephanie Francis said, I am also a procrastinator and I fully believe that I kind of do my best work under pressure and under time constraints. It's a lie that we're telling ourselves. <laughs> Make sure that you're giving yourself enough time to write through this, let it sit, um, and then really kind of figure out if that is the direction that you wanna go with that. Uh, Stephanie, if you could move on to the next slide, that would be awesome. So then just some general do's, um, an interest grabbing opening for sure, for sure. Um, I personally read almost exactly a thousand application essays every year. Um, I love reading essays. I, I truly, truly, it, it, it's one of my favorite aspects of my job for sure. Um, but it's a, a happier time when I you know, want to continue reading that essay. So an interest grabbing opening, absolutely. Um, Try to be introspective, if at all possible. I know that this can be challenging for students. Um, it can be challenging for everybody when they're writing something. Um, but it, it really is a much more meaningful experience, I think, for both the student and the admission counselor if we are really finding out who you are um, in this essay. So kind of look within. And I know that sounds a little cheesy. It doesn't necessarily need to be you know, a journal entry. You don't need to pour your heart out onto the page if you don't want to. But um, I do think some introspection is important. Be creative, absolutely. We all read, I know admission counselors across the country will echo this sentiment. Um, we all read a lot of college essays on the exact same topics. Not surprising, um, you know, high school students are going through a lot of the same things during their four years in school. Um, you, you know, a, a winning championship moment, um, you know, a heartbreak they had, 
um, a painful experience with either a teacher or a parent, not that you can't write about any of these things, you absolutely can. Just make sure that you are approaching it from a creative way if possible. Um, and then pay attention to not only what you say, but how colleges will hear it. I love reading essays that incorporate humor. They're fantastic. They're absolutely some of my favorite ones. Um, they can be very powerful tools, humor, irony, satire, but just make sure that you know kind of who is reading your essay. I, I know that you're not expected to get to know every admission counselor that you are gonna have, but just use them with, with caution. You know, I have a pretty wide swath of humor, I like to think, you know, Bob's Burgers is one of my all time favorite shows. So it's pretty hard to offend me, um, but that might not be true for the five other schools that you're applying to. So um, just use hum humor, irony, just with a little bit of caution. Um, I always like to kind of mention that. Um, Stephanie, if you could move on to the next slide. And then just some of the don'ts. So I don't want to be too negative with this, but things to avoid if possible, you know, certainly don't use other people's words, don't copy anybody else's work. That's kind of an obvious thing. Um, try not to reinvent yourself too much in this essay. Um, we really can tell, you know, or, or we know, I should say, admission counselors know that you are high school students. You are not Ernest Hemingway. <laughs> we're, not, we're not expecting, you know, Hemingway worthy work here. Um, don't try and be somebody that you're not um, in this essay. Again, kind of coming back to you for sure. Um, don't focus on numbers. We have all of that information. We have your GPA. We have your test score if you have decided to be a test submitter. Um, you know, we have, you know, letters of recommendation, we have AP and IB scores, we have great, we have, we have all of that. Um, you don't need to focus on numbers in that. Um, and I would also recommend not using your essay as a resume. Um, if you don't feel like the Common App or the Pioneer App has, is, is a DU application, but you know, most people use the Common App. Um, if you don't feel like the Common App activity section is enough, um, space to be able to speak to what you've done in high school, totally fine. Submit an additional resume, but don't, I would not recommend using the essay as your resume. Um, I would recommend putting that in a different space. Um, don't be repetitive. Don't um, repeat information that's found elsewhere in your application, kind of echoing that uh, resume. Don't use slang. Um, we want you to be authentic. Tech speak, I would avoid it. I really would. Um, don't forget to triple check your work. I know that that sounds obvious as well, but um, you really would be amazed. Some people are absolutely incredible writers, but just get a little bit lazy at the end. And then there's those one or two mistakes that make you kind of question whether they, you know, were paying that close of attention. So it's, there's, the, there's well written and then there's well edited. I think those are two different things. Um, don't write about somebody else exclusively. Um, you, you can answer the question, you know, talk about someone who's been important to you in your life. You can absolutely answer that question. Um, but don't then just write a biography on somebody else. I read quite a few biographies um, that don't necessarily speak to the student who was applying to DU. I want to know about the student who was applying to DU. I want to know why they were important to you. I want to know what you learned from them. Um, so make sure that you're always bringing it back to you. Don't thesauricize. Um, fancier is definitely not always better. Um, I can tell when someone has kind of right clicked on every word in their essay and decided to make it a bigger, fancier word. You don't need to do that. Be authentic to who you are um, and the language that you use. And then try not to be too incredibly wordy either. So this is actually a tool or a, a tip that I like to give students. Um, essays can very often be sabotaged by wordiness, I think, and can look very similar in terms of the sentence structure that is used throughout. Um, I would read your essay out loud and then kind of listen to the rhythm of the prose. And then I would label each sentence that is 10 words or under as a short sentence. So just, you can just put an S. Any sentence that is maybe 12 to 20 words as, an, as a medium, as an M. And then anything longer as an L and see how that reads. If you have all S's, all M's, all L's, um, you might want to vary that up just a little bit. So, you know, a, a more intriguing essay might look like MS, ML, LS, as opposed to SSS, MMM, SSS, LLL. Um, so just a tip for you. Don't have to follow it, but I find it useful. Um, all right, I'm going to hand it back over to Stephanie Francis uh, for just a minute, and then we will come back and answer some more questions for you.
Yeah, thank you. And I think that's such a great tip that Stephanie Tangleson just mentioned. Again, you all will get this presentation sent to you after and all of our notes are in there. So if any of you are like me and you're like, I want to incorporate that SML um, kind of trick within all of your writing, uh, just know all of that's going to be included in the presentation. The same way that these slides are as well. So we're going to go through a couple of different examples of what we might think is an essay that needs a little bit of work and what we would consider a really great, positive, well-written essay. Um, again, not expecting you to be able to read every single line that's in here. I'll kind of summarize them for you, um, but you will have this later on if you want to go back to them and look at them. Uh, but this essay here is probably an example of an essay that I would say might need a little bit of work and might need a little bit of love. Uh, the biggest thing that I noticed with this student, um, and these are both real essays that I've actually reviewed as a counselor, all names and you know relevant factors of who these people are have been eliminated. So no, no, no worries about that. But I think it's a good idea for you all to get a glimpse of what some other students are writing about and kind of our opinions on those. So again, this is something that I think might need a little bit of love. Uh, the first thing I notice about it is that it's well under the word requirements. So even if the university that you're applying to doesn't have a word count requirement, Again, you want to make it long enough to cover all of those details, but short enough to keep that interesting. Like I mentioned earlier, that common app 250 to 650 word count is probably a good rule of thumb to follow. Um, but I read this essay and it was really interesting. The student was the first female to join their school's wrestling team. I wanted to learn so much more about that. I wanted to learn so much more about how that affected that person, how it affected their goals and their college aspirations. Did they want to be a wrestler in college? Things like that. Uh, but I didn't really get any of that because they didn't really utilize that full word count. And so I was kind of left hanging uh, in that sense. There's also some different sentence structure errors, some grammar and things like that. So another great example of, you know, why you should always have these things proofread. Um, there's very few things that are more frustrating as a counselor than you're reading an essay and it's a great topic you want to learn more about. And then number one, you're either cut short, you don't get to learn more about it, like Stephanie was mentioning earlier, or number two, you're just stumbling over, you know, misplaced commas and, and little things like that that seem trivial, but ultimately end up making a pretty big difference. This essay here, though, again, I know you probably can't read what this says. I'll kind of summarize for it, and then you'll be able to go back and read this on your own if you'd like. Uh, but this is what I would consider a well-written essay, um, a quote-unquote good college application essay. Um, so this student's topic was to talk about their background, identity, interest, anything like that. Um, this student was actually from a really small mountain town, and they used their essay as an opportunity to tell us a little bit about the history of the namesake of their town, um, but then also how that related to them and their personal growth. It was extremely creative. It was a lot of fun to read. The first sentence of the essay says, my backyard is a, is a failed volcano. Instantly, I'm hooked. Um, like Stephanie was mentioning, that interest-grabbing intro, I automatically want to read more about this. Why is the student talking about a failed volcano? Why is the volcano in their backyard? Um, and then you read more about it, and I really felt like I got a great sense of not just where this student is coming from and the environment that they're coming from, but how that's shaped them as a person and who they are as a person now. So ultimately, again, after reading this, I really feel like I have a better idea of this student. Um, I have a better idea of what they're passionate about, what they could potentially bring to our campus if they were a DU student. Um, so again, overall, I'd say probably a decent essay there. <laughs> but that's pretty much all we have for the presentation side of things. Um, I'm going to invite Stephanie to come back on screen with me. I know we may have one or two questions that are already in the queue for the Q&A. Um, if you all do have any more questions about writing your essays, please, please, please feel free to put them in the Q&A so we can answer those. If you have more personal questions that you don't want to ask in front of the larger group, you've got our contact information right there. Um, please feel free to utilize us as a resource and we'd be happy to answer those. Um, but Stephanie, I'll pose the first question to you if you don't mind. Um, we had a student who was asking us uh, if DU has a space in the application that allows students to explain or go more in depth into a situation they may believe could hinder their acceptance to the university. So can you talk a little bit about including like additional information? Yes, absolutely. So we, the, on the Common App, um, there is literally an additional information section. Um, I would definitely recommend using that for anything that you think might need an explanation. Maybe it was a disciplinary violation. Maybe you want to talk about um, a learning difficulty that was diagnosed late. 
maybe you, you know, want to explain a, you know, a, a dip in a grade in 10th grade. Um, it's, I, I would use that section for anything that you want to provide maybe four to five sentences on, but you don't necessarily want to build your entire essay around. Nor do I think you should build your entire essay around that. Let me also kind of add that. <laughs> um, every every now and again we will, yeah. Every, every now and again we will get a student that will use their essay as you know kind of that um, in, as that explanation. Um, I don't necessarily think that that's the best use of that space. Um, I think that um, again a little bit more creative, a little bit more in, um, introspection um, is welcomed there. But definitely utilize that that additional information space. I I do definitely recommend it for students um, that may have had anything happen in their high school career that they do want to kind of briefly touch on. So yeah, um, I think personally that the additional information is like the least utilized part of the application that students really should take advantage of. And even if you're not, because we're talking about the additional information in the Common application, even if you're not using the Common app, I think it's always totally acceptable to reach out to the school, see if you can submit supplemental essays or supplemental materials or things like that. Usually schools will be pretty upfront if they don't want you to send those things. Um, so always room for you to explain that. So Stephanie, um, I love this next question yeah. because we, I know that we had actually discussed this um, earlier. So how do we think admission counselors this year are going to view COVID-19 essays um, or topics as essays? Yeah, it's um, <laughs> for short answer, I would probably say stay away from it. Um, just because I feel like a lot every generation kind of has that one thing. There was a period of time where we were reading a lot of essays about students who experienced 9 11. We were a, a lot of students from specific regions who, you know, experienced natural, uh, natural tragedies and things like that, like hurricanes or earthquakes and stuff. And that's totally fine. I have no doubt that that might have impacted you deeply as a person, as a student, um, especially with something like the coronavirus just keep in mind that that's something that's deeply affecting every person in the world. And so if you want to use this as a space to really tell your unique personal experience, maybe you did have a really unique personal experience that relates to that, and that's totally fine. I don't want to discourage you from hiding that away if that's something that you want to write about. Um, but again, just keep kind of that creativity thing in mind. Um, there's going to be a lot of students who are also experiencing that. And so if you're trying to quote unquote make yourself stand out, um, which I think is kind of a, a weird thing for us to say, but um, may want to stray away from that. But I don't know what you think, Stephanie. Yeah, no, yep. <laughs> um, yeah. I, it's, yep. It's, a, it's, a, it's a hard thing to speak to because it, is at, it has been such a traumatic experience for so many people for so many reasons. And I realize those reasons differ a lot um, from kind of person to person and family to family. Um, so I, 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 I never want to tell a student to not write about something that's affected them deeply on the one hand. Right. And on the other hand, it's such a, this is such a unique set of circumstances in that, as you said, literally everybody has been affected very deeply by yeah. this. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm already kind of envisioning the essays in my head of, you know, the, <laughs> the explanation of how school closed and how we had to go online and mm -hmm. we had to do virtual. And I, that is, it's, it's legit and it was painful and it sucks but we already know it. So, right. <laughs> so uh, it's uh, the, the, the creative aspect is not touched on in that, in that essay. So right. if you're, if you're going to write about it, I would, I would just say tackle it from a, from a real creative space. Um, would, yeah. Would, and I think that's, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, 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 no. Um, no I think it's a good segue though. There is the next question somebody was asking if there's any S or any topics that we would recommend they stay away from or not recommend students writing about? Do you have any ideas on those? Yes. Um, <laughs> something <laughs> I, I actually, I don't mind a political essay. I know we, you know, people talk about not talking about religion or politics. Um, I don't mind reading about either of those topics in essays to be perfectly honest. Um, but I think there are certain uh, ways that students can write about something fairly controversially um, or they choose an extremely controversial topic, um, one of the two. I, again, kind of getting back to that, um, you know, humor, irony, satire can be powerful tools, but use them with caution. Um, I would say the same thing about controversial topics. Um, if, you're, if you're going to choose that to write about, just make sure that you're writing it in a way that 
you don't think is going to offend somebody. Um, I read a lot of really wonderfully written essays um, from students who have different religious and political views than I do. Um, you can write about that. That that doesn't, it's not going, it shouldn't offend somebody. Um, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't offend an admission counselor. Um, but it, but I do caution you from writing about something highly controversial, whatever highly controversial might mean to you. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good point. All of us as admission counselors, no matter what school we work for, we're pretty much trained to leave our biases at the door. And we really try to read every single essay. You know, I've read essays about topics that I don't necessarily agree with, but it's more about the substance and that student and where they're coming from. But again, we are human beings and you don't always know who the person on the other side of that screen is reading that. So um, just kind of be cautious of that. So Stephanie, another question that came in. Um, would admission counselors be a resource to read our essays beforehand to point us in the right direction? What do you think about that? Yeah, I would say that to use it as kind of a last line of defense, you've got a lot of great resources within your own community with your English teachers, your counselors, friends and family, people like that. Um, you know, I'm sure some of you have older siblings who have applied to college or you have friends who have already applied. And so those people are really great resources because they know you personally. And so they can better speak on and better give you advice on, you know, if what you're writing about is a good idea for you, if you're writing in your own voice and things like that. That being said, as I mentioned, our job is to help you through the college application process. So if there is anything that you just really want advice from the perspective of an admission counselor, um, I don't want to say never because I don't want to speak for other counselors, but I feel like very rarely would you be turned away from someone um, if you're just genuinely seeking advice. Yeah, and I, I would agree with that. I, I don't think that I would. Uh, I, I certainly wouldn't have an issue if a student, you know, wrote to me and said, hey, I'm, I'm down to two topics and I would just really love the advice of, you know, someone that's been doing this for a long time, you know, which which topic do you think, you know, like I feel that I can write equally passionately on both topics. What topic do you think might resonate more with you? Um, I, I would have no problem giving my opinion on that. In terms of reviewing whole essays, I think that just comes down to a matter of not having time a lot of, a lot of the time, um, yeah. to be perfectly honest. Um, I, I would love, love nothing more <laughs> than to be able to just read <laughs> application essays like all day. It is like yeah. truly my favorite thing. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I think it's going to be a more, more an issue of time than, any, than, than want, unfortunately. Yeah. We have a lot uh, of different hats we're wearing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but a good question. I know you talked about um, trying to be as introspective as possible. So there is somebody who's curious, is there a risk in being too introspective or too much introspection in their essays? It's a good question. Um, it's pretty rare for me to read an essay where I think, wow, this person has really kind of gone into a realm that makes me a little uncomfortable. Like it's, it's right. real rare. Um, every now and again, it happens. So, I mean, never say never, but um, I, I think if you just kind of keep in mind that you, that you are writing this as your hopeful entry <laughs> onto a college <laughs> campus. Like, would you yeah. want, you know, 10 other students at that college to read that essay? You know, would you want one of your uh, future professors reading that essay? If the answer is yes, then I think you're good. Um, if you're like, well, I don't know, I, that's a little too personal for me, then maybe reconsider. Um, I think that's kind of my line on that. Um, I, but I will say it's pretty rare that I read something that I'm like, wow, that was a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's very fair. I always tell students your college application essay is not to be used as your diary. So if it's just something that you really want to get off of your chest, maybe not the best place to put that. Um, but if it is something that you feel like that really is like the most comfortable space that you can talk about that. Again, like Stephanie said, very few times have we ever read something that it makes us super uncomfortable to learn about. We're happy and very grateful to learn about that type of personal stuff of a student because I I think that takes a lot of courage and bravery to write about. Um, so if you're not comfortable with it, if it doesn't fit within the prompt, just leave it. Yeah, and that is a beautiful segue to the next question. Um, we had um, someone wondering if uh, we would recommend identity essays. So, um, you know, reading about someone who um, has uh, either come out, not come out, trans on that path, 
um, I, I know how I feel about that. How do you feel about that? <laughs> yeah, I think, so I think it's important to mention that your essays are, they're very confidential. We don't go and spewing these and telling them to a bunch of different people and things like that. So um, if it's something that you really want to write about, but you're nervous about, you know, maybe you haven't come out or anything like that, just to use that example, um, just know that we keep all of that information close to the chest. We're not going to go share that with your family or your teachers or anything like that. Um, but I think it's really just like what I was just talking about. If it's a part of your story, a part of who you are, if it fits within the topic and you feel comfortable writing that, we're happy learning about that part of you. Um, but if it's just something that you really just want to get out there, you really want us to know, but it doesn't fit within the topic and it's not really a part of your story and your story going to college, there's probably other areas of your application that you can include that um, or you can explore maybe submitting a supplemental material. Yeah, but yeah I what's your opinion agree. on that? Yeah, no, I, I could not agree more. And I, I will say it has been so incredibly wonderful. I've been, you know, like I said, I've been doing this for 14 years. Um, the number of identity essays that I've read in the past couple of years in particular um, have, the numbers have risen a lot. And when a student, I mean, obviously it is such a big part of so many student stories, if they are choosing to write about that, um, they are absolutely some of my favorite essays. So. Um, yeah. I, if, if it, if it is deeply a part of your story, I say go for it for sure. Um, yeah. but yes, as Stephanie said, if it's something that you feel that you should write about because I would, I wouldn't necessarily right. use that as your, as your topic. If you're not, I mean, I right. say passionate about it, but, um, if it's, <laughs> you know, <laughs> if it's, yeah, uh, write something that you think, I think that's a good rule of thumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a good rule of thumb. It's kind of like we were mentioning before, don't write about just what you want the admission counselor to hear. So again, it, I don't mean this specifically to the identity question, but whatever you're choosing to write about, if you think about that prompt and you're like, I don't really feel that strongly about it or that really talks a lot about me, but an admission counselor is gonna wanna hear this, probably a good idea to scrap that idea. <laughs> Couldn't agree more because it will come through. Like your your lack yeah. of wanting to speak to it in more depth will will come through, for sure. Right, right. So now we have actually one of my favorite questions to talk about with writing Bring the it. essay. Um, we had somebody who's wondering, what if you have no interesting backstory, no all defining quality or massive leadership role you've served? Um, what if you're just a common person? How do you stand out and compete amongst all of the quote unquote extraordinaries? It's a great question. What do you it think is, about Stephanie? I, it is a fantastic question. Um, and you don't need, like most of us aren't extraordinary. Most of us have not right. had something extraordinary happen to us in our lives. Like when I was 17, I really had not had anything all that extraordinary happen to me. Um, I, whatever, again, I'm like, I'm, I'm really sorry to be a broken record on this. <laughs> whatever you feel you can passionately and confidently convey in an essay, like, you know, Stephanie wrote about, um, or I'm um, talked about uh, someone writing about grass and how it was like her favorite essay. <laughs> like, I, I just heard of an exercise, actually, you know how classes will go around and do the, you know, tell us five interesting things about you. Um, yeah. I just heard one that was like, I don't want to hear anything interesting about you. I want to hear something uninteresting about you. What's something boring? Yeah. Um, and I'm That's like, awesome. The boring question is more interesting than the interesting part. Yeah. Like I like I, I want to hear the boring part. Like someone said, like I don't. It, it was you know a bunch of adults. It was like I don't drink coffee in the morning. Like boring, yeah. but kind of interesting. Most adults drink coffee. Yeah. In the morning. Like yeah. It, What's wrong with you? You don't drink coffee. Yes, and like it started this whole dialogue on like, well, hold on, wait a second. Like, <laughs> like something that yeah. kind of makes your head turn a little bit. So I, I don't know. It it might be one way to approach yeah. that. Um, you know, think about something that is a little ordinary, but like extraordinary in its ordinariness, um, if yeah. that makes sense. So it would be that makes kind of total sense to me. Yeah. So I like yeah. I like reading those. I know. I, yeah, for sure. I know. I kind of briefly mentioned it when we were doing the presentation, but I always call it the American Idol moment. If you've ever seen the show and a lot of these people have these really heart-wrenching stories and it's not to discredit that it's not to say those aren't valid but the reality is a lot of us haven't gone through those types of things especially as a high school student as a teenager and so if that if you have gone through something huge extraordinary it's a part of your story and you want to include that 
again, that's phenomenal to write about, but I actually was giving this talk at a high school a couple of years ago, and I ended up having a student, I was kind of flattered, I had a student who wrote their essay to DU kind of about how they didn't have that big moment and how they're just a normal student who likes to binge watch Netflix and eat Cheetos and do play with their, like hang out with their friends, do all the things. And it was really, it was authentic. They wrote it in a creative enough way to where um, I really got a glimpse into just who this person was um, on a normal given day. Um, and I think that could be just as effective as, you know, writing about a big moment if you have one of those. Yes, I completely agree. Um, all right, we did have one come in and I actually thought of this a little bit earlier, so I'm glad that somebody asked this. Uh, it says, for the essays, how do you view writing it in a unique structure? So like shaping the essay in a weird shape, like a trophy, or like you're writing a poem. Um, again, I feel yeah. like I know I have an answer for this, but I'm going to let Francis answer that first. Yeah, that's a good question. I actually don't know if I've seen too many of those. I'd love to see one of those. Uh, I think it's just one of those things like uh, Stephanie Tangleson was talking about humor and irony and satire. If you can do it and you can do it well, do it. If it's not your strong suit, if you have to like teach yourself how to rework paragraphs and write poetry and whatnot just so you can put that in your college application don't feel the need to do that i promise there's a lot of other ways you can be creative and make yourself unique um, but for that specific question about like the the structure of it i'd say it could be really interesting and very cool if you can do it um, but if not nobody's expecting you to go that above and beyond <laughs> Yeah, I totally agree. And it can't be a very eye catching feature. I've read a few of yeah. them, like you open up the essay and you're like, oh, cool. Um, so it can be something yeah. that's an immediate attention grabber. I will say the only thing I'll say about that is make, 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 make sure that whatever system you're uploading it into is formatting it properly. Um, it, yeah. Systems can do all kinds of wonky things with spacing and font and so i would if you're if you're going to do something different like that just make sure. extra sure that it's coming out the way that it's intended to be read because otherwise it may look super yeah. weird on the other end um but as long as you can do that yeah. i'm all for it right yeah copy and paste can be kind of dangerous with your essays because i can't tell you how many times i get an essay and it's just a massive block of words and i know it's not usually what the student is intending to do it's just a copy and paste error but just kind of be cautious about that. Yes, and on that note, uh, I will say, yeah. oh no, I'm sorry, just very quickly. Go no, go uh, ahead, go ahead. On that note, please make sure. <laughs> um, I, I do realize that formatting issues happen and that they're definitely not always the student's fault for sure. If possible, make sure that you are including some paragraph breaks in your essay. Um, admission counselors are reading so many essays you know kind of during application season we need those breaks we need to know where to kind of pause and like take a five second breath and like where our eyes can rest for a minute um you know kind of where your next thought starts and where this one ends so try to try to make sure that um, those paragraphs are being used properly if possible okay. sorry Stephanie. <laughs> awesome no that's great we have a question from a Stephanie. So this is like a Stephanie trio here. Bring it, um, love it. Stephanie is wondering um, if we have any tips on how to be able to judge if humor is appropriate or at what point does it just become silly? Yeah. I, <laughs> That's the question. I think, well, I think it's so essay by essay. Like it's hard to give a right. general little answer to that. Like I've read some pretty silly essays, but the structure is there. Like they had the attention grabbing mm -hmm. opening. They, you know, talked about themselves. They brought it full circle. Think everything was spelled properly. Like, I think as long as the, the kind of proper structure is there, you can yeah. get silly. Um, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't mind, I don't mind silly. I don't know. How do you feel about that, Stephanie? Yeah. No, I agree. Cause um, I was, I, the first thing I thought back to was an application I read once where the whole thing was kind of humorous they um they used their activities section and had really funny um satirical descriptions of all the activities they were involved in and then their essay was written in the same style so i kind of just got the impression like oh this is just a funny humorous student this is their personality so i think that's that's probably a hard thing to judge but like we talked about if you're not known for your humor or if it's not something you're comfortable doing 
probably just need to leave it out because um, then it becomes a little obvious, like you're trying to make a joke or something like that. But if it flows, if it fits, go for it. So it's nice to have a little laugh in the middle of reading a bunch of applications. Yes, and I will, I, on exactly that note, I, I realize this is an essay workshop, but um, I love when students kind of write humorous things to describe their yeah. activities and their activities page. Like, I love it. It's it, it's just it's a nice little it's a nice little breather like um, yeah. and also on that note I will say spell out any acronyms that you're using on your activities page or in your essay like we aren't all from the same part of the country we don't always know exactly what you're talking about if you just put an acronym like spell out anything you're using like that it's very helpful to us <laughs> right so yeah. I'll just say that um, we did have another question come in I love this question um, I think it Applies to everybody. Everybody should know the answer to this. Um, what topics do you see most often? Yeah. Who? Okay. <laughs> so like some, it's pretty. Go. Most of your admission counselors, we pretty much know one another. Um, it's a very kind of tight circle. We travel a lot. We travel with the same types of people, and so um, we talk pretty often from school to school. And so um, I would say probably the more common ones I hear about um, are usually sports injuries. That's a big one. Um, we'll hear a lot about, um, you know, unfortunately, something a lot of students have gone through is their parents have been divorced. I read a lot of essays about things like that. Um, this isn't to say that any of those topics are bad topics to write about. Again, if that's a big part of your story and you can fit it in with a topic, that's great to write about. Um, those are just, I think, kind of common things that a lot of high school students are going through. And so um, if you are gonna write about one of those common topics, um, you know, like Stephanie mentioned heartbreak earlier, that's kind of a common one I see. Um, just make sure you're doing it in a unique way to where your admission counselor is not going to be like, oh, here's another torn ACL. Yes. Yep. Uh, yep. Could, I <laughs> couldn't have summed it up better. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, this might be a, a kind of a quick answer for, um, so I'll just pass it off to you, Stephanie. Uh, this student was wondering, uh, they said, you mentioned that we should be reaching out to our admission counselors prior to submitting applications. Um, is this common for students to do? Um, do you have any feedback on reaching out to counselors? Yeah, um, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's common. Um, I think some students do uh, research a school, find their admission counselor, um, you know, ask those questions in advance. I wouldn't, I mean, with the thousand applications that I read a year over kind of the two decision periods that we have, I'm probably hearing from, I'm gonna guess 10 to 15% of those students over the course of the year, right. about 100 and 150 kind of right in that range. Um, so it, I'm just guessing at that number, but um, it's certainly not the majority. So I wouldn't necessarily say that you, yes, you absolutely have to seek out your admission counselor and that's a must right. if you, you know, wanna get into any school. I don't think that's the case. Um, I never think it's a bad idea to seek out your admission counselor and send them a quick note and say, hey, I'm really interested in your school. And, um, you know, here's a question or two that I might have. And I, I, I never think that's a bad idea by any stretch of the imagination. Right. Um, but I also don't think that it's absolutely mandatory. Right. Yeah. Just know if you've got the questions, there are people here to answer them for you. Absolutely. Um, I'll, uh, what, uh, Another good question and probably one or two more questions before we wrap up. Yeah. Um, what do admission counselors think of mental health essays? Um, I've heard mixed things about them. So I'm wondering if it's an issue to avoid. Um, I'm happy to answer this yeah. too. But. Yeah, I think that's a really good question. I think it kind of goes back to our same answer for if you're trying, if you want to write about like your personal identity, um, you know, however you identify. Um, it's sort of similar to that. If it's something that you feel like you're in a good place to where that's something that you want to write about and you feel like it's a good space for you to write about, it impacts who you are. It's a big part of your story. Feel free to write about that. Um, we definitely don't want to discourage, like, again, if this is kind of the only place that you really feel safe writing about that sort of thing, I never want to discourage anybody from, you know, telling their story because if you reach out to anybody and it has to be your admission counselor, we can be there to support you. But um, yeah, again, just kind of depends where you're at in your mental health journey, if you're comfortable writing about that, if it fits within the prompt sort of thing. Totally agree, she's right. Yeah. <laughs> right. No one's gonna hold it against you. Uh, let's see. Um, I saw a question down here. Again, 
we, you guys are asking some awesome questions. We most likely won't have time to get to every single one of these, but we will get a transcript of all of your all's questions. So if there's any more personal ones that we can go back and answer individually, you may receive an email from us uh, just following up and answering your question because we do want to make sure you all get those answered. Um, but I did see one in here. Um, I think it's kind of a fun question. Somebody was asking, what is your favorite essay you've ever read about? I know I kind of explained what mine was, but I'm curious what yours is, Stephanie. Um, yep, mine, I have a tie. Uh, <laughs> um, one was this really fabulously written essay about, um, he, he wrote and he was a golfer. He was a, a high, on, on his high school golf team and wrote about um, a very critical hole in a championship. Um, so again, kind of sports championship, not necessarily torn an ACL, but sports championship. Um, <laughs> But he wrote about it so beautifully. It was like a mental train of thought. And so it was like a, you know, oh, don't go left. Oh, wait, but you, but you have to go this way. Avoid the thing. And it was, it, the way he did it was very creative and really like put me in the scene. And then at the very end of the essay, um, he shot the ball into the lake. So it was, it was, it was just a great, but it was, it was, it was humorous. It was creative. Yeah. It was it was all of the things like everything was spelled properly. Yeah. Um, it just it it had it hit all the right notes for me. Um, plus, my dad was a yeah, high school golfer, awesome. so I, mean, I might be a little bit biased. Um, but there was another one. Um, speaking of bringing religion into an essay, I, she actually started out the essay by saying, "I'm not religious, but my parents' names are Mary and Joseph," and I just thought it was the funniest <laughs> thing I ever read. So, That's <laughs> incredible. <laughs> It really, like, it really set the tone for the rest of the essay. Yeah. Um, very memorable. So those are my two. Yeah. <laughs> that's really awesome. That's, that's, I think, the most perfect example of somebody setting the tone in the first, like, sentence or two for the rest of their essay. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah, it was great. Like, you knew pretty much exactly what to expect from that. <laughs> nice. Um, should we awesome. have one well, time for one more? you think we may have time for one more? Yeah, yeah I think, it. yeah, I think one more. Um, let's see. Uh, one of the ones I think you had tagged is where and how is a good place to talk about why we want to go to DU? That's a great question. Yeah, great question because we are representing DU today. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that, again, kind of talking back to you don't want to repeat everything in your resume. You don't want to repeat everything that we're already looking at in your application. If you're applying to DU, we know you want to go to DU. At least some capacity of you wants to go to DU. So if it kind of fits in naturally, I think personally to mention in your essay, I don't think it hurts to mention, but if it's something you really feel strongly about, like you want us as an admissions committee to understand how much you want to come to DU, that is totally fine. We would love to hear that, but maybe that's a good opportunity, I think, to utilize the additional information, um, or that might just be a great way for you to reach out to your admission counselor and say, hey, I'm submitting an application. I'm really interested in DU because of XYZ. Um, you can kind of go a couple different routes with that. Um, I think uh, one of our moderators wanted us to answer one more question. Um, let's see. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, yep. Um, should we title the essay and can essay start with a question? Um, yes, yeah. I think you should title an essay. You want to start off with that one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I personally think you should title an essay. Um, I don't, again, I don't think it's a make or break, um, at, but I, I will say I, I do appreciate um, when the question itself is included in the essay. It's just a nice reminder of what you're actually answering um, as opposed to it just starting out. So I, I would say if you are not going to title it to so definitely include that, um, but you can include the question itself and a title. It, the, I think the title is kind of personal um, depending on you know, whether yeah. it's the essay itself kind of calls for it or not, but I would, I would put the question itself um, in there. Right. Yeah, I think the title is really helpful for students who are maybe really nervous about having an interest grabbing opening because I can't tell you how many times I've read an essay where it wasn't necessarily the most interest grabbing beginning, but they had a really unique and creative title. And so that in and of itself just made me want to read, read, read the essay. Um, so I think especially if you're kind of, I totally agree with everything Stephanie Tangleson just said, but I think especially if you're struggling with that opening, um, maybe just leave it right and then um, you can kind of work out some different title ideas. And then um, do we think essays can or should start with a question? 
I, it's kind of a hit or miss thing. Um, I would definitely make sure if you are going to start off with a question, especially have that proofread. I've seen it done really well. I've seen that done um, really kind of lazily. I think if you're going to start your essay off with a question, just be sure that your entire essay isn't just going back and like answering like line by line your answers to that question. Like you still want to tell some sort of a story. Um, so I would say maybe avoid that if you're going to do it. But if you can, feel free to put it in there. Completely agree. Yeah. All right. I think well, we awesome. need to close yeah. out. Yep. So we, we will get to the other questions that we have in there um, for sure. We will make sure to get back to everybody that wrote. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, Stephanie, any final thoughts before we close out? No, yeah, thank you all so much. Um, I know it's probably late, especially for those of you on the East Coast. So we especially uh, thank everybody for uh, spending some of their evening with us. Um, we do want to give you all a couple of reminders because we are representing DU, a couple of things to look forward to. Um, we are going to be having an open house uh, October 12th through the 17th. Hopefully you all will start receiving some communications about that and how to sign up to those different webinars. But there's going to be some really fun interactive things you can do with our current students, learn about some of our academic programs. So uh, just be sure to keep that week of October 12th in your schedules. Um, if you want to learn more about a being a test optional student, we're also going to be hosting a webinar on that. Um, so you can just check back on our virtual visit page. Um, it's got a list of all the webinars we're doing, all the virtual options like uh, tours, information sessions, things like that. You can find all that on our virtual visit web page. Um, we'd be more than happy to continue talking to you all and uh, teaching you a little bit more about the U. Any final thoughts, Stephanie? No, I think I'm good. I think we covered everything. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so then from both of us, thank you again. Uh, we hope wherever you're joining us from, you're staying safe, you're staying healthy. Um, take care of yourself, take care of uh, those around you, um, and hopefully we'll see you all on campus soon. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Bye, Bye. guys.